Okay, so here we go with the uh, truth series. Um, the, like I said before, the truth is important to me. And the first question I ask is, is there such a thing as truth? Is there an absolute truth? Well, if you say there is no such thing as absolute truth, that's an absolute truth. So it's, you know, self-defeating statement. Um, there is truth. There are answers to questions like, where did the universe come from? Why are we here? Is there a higher power, intelligent design, or did matter create itself and form itself? Um, what is my place in the universe? Why do I exist? How should I act toward other people? Anyway, these are all questions that, that we all have to answer, and I think a lot of the answers or the seeking of the answers for these questions gets overcome by our day-to-day -day needs for survival. A lot of people say, who cares about these things? Why do you think about them so much? You know, figure out how to get a job, pay the bills. Well, my answer to that is getting a job and paying the bills, there's a part of me that says, what's the point in all that? Um, you know, I can go get a job. All right, I'll go make drugs and then I'll go sell the drugs. Um, ice is fairly easy to make and you can make a lot of money on it. Why not do that? Um, are there moral implications? Are there societal, community implications? At any rate, to me, it's seeking some type of system for knowing what I should hold to be important and what I shouldn't. Well, the first question that, that comes to mind if I'm, if I'm going back to the origin of things or questions that I have is, where did the universe come from? Well, what do you mean by universe? I mean all the matter that exists in space. Where did it come from? The way I think about it, there's only two possible answers to this question. Either the matter came from nothing, nowhere, or the matter has always existed. Now, my logical finite mind says, well, it's impossible for it always to have existed because everything has a beginning. Well, that brings me to the point where my logic is faulty inherently, um, and that's because if everything has a beginning, what was before that? So there's already some kind of discord in my mind. So what I have to do is seek things out the best I can and accept the answers based on the proof that I found, whatever that may be. So when I think, I think either... I mean, for me, matter couldn't have always existed. There may have been something that has always existed, but I refuse to believe it's matter. If I have to believe something has always existed, I'd rather it be a sentient being, okay? I have no proof for that whatsoever, but for me, okay, you're right, mental crutch, because I have to believe something about it to get moving in the forward. So I'm going to believe that if there's anything that's always existed, it's an intelligent being. All right. Well, but we're talking about the matter in the universe. So either the matter in the universe came from nothing by itself, or an intelligent being created that matter from nothing for a purpose. Well, if the matter was created by itself, I mean, I just don't see how that's possible. There's nothing, all of a sudden there's something. What created it? And that brings me to the question of, instead of asking what, maybe I need to ask why. Why is there matter? Why is there a universe? If it came into being on its own, then there's no real purpose. It's still going to be governed by the laws that we find within the universe, cause and effect. So at the moment of the Big Bang, an object in motion tends to stay in motion until acted on by an outside force. So all that's happening, all reality is, is an unfolding of the dominoes. They just got pushed over. They got they were set up and started by the Big Bang, and now they're just falling down. And nothing's ever going to change that. Because all the forces that existed, say there's nothing, okay? Imagine nothing. And then, boom, Big Bang. Well, all the matter and all the forces that were ever going to exist existed right then, and they exploded outward in every direction. And all the... The rest of history is going to be is this those forces playing themselves out. Now, if, on the other hand, I believe that there's an intelligent being that created these things, how and why? Now, for the believers, 
you don't believe in the Big Bang, and you believe in six literal days, but that's not what the Bible says. If you study the Hebrew, the word for create is barak, and the word for make is asa. I may have those backwards. I don't remember right this second, but the point is that verses 1 and 2, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the Big Bang. God created all the matter necessary for the entire universe from nothing, ex nihilo, at the Big Bang. Then, over six successive periods, six days, that's the Hebrew word yom, it doesn't mean a literal day. If you're going to take things literally, fine, but the first, when you read the Bible, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God separated the light from the darkness, and the light he called day. So day isn't a 24-hour period of time. Day is light. Night is dark. That's it. That's the literal translation. Okay, so over six successive periods of time, the intelligent being that has always existed created matter first, and then over six successive periods of time, he formed the matter that he had already created at the Big Bang into light and darkness, stars, earth, sea and sky, other planets, etc., the entire universe. So to me, the question becomes, well... All right, if I'm a non-believer and I believe these things created themselves, then everything's just falling down, dominoes. So there's really very little meaning to it except for what us sentient, be sentient beings give to it. If, on the other hand, you're a believer, then there was an intelligent being that created all the matter and then formed it over six successive periods of time. But why did he do that? Talk about that more later.